computers. Uh, I'm Rick Harsh. Uh, I'm a reader. I'm not the best at reading to people, but I'm going to do it here. Um, I have the one-year anniversary of Corona Samstat coming up on Saturday, and um, there's been a lot of misinformation about this press. One, Noah said the sale that we're having to celebrate this, Noah of everyone who reads this must converse, put out the um, misinformation that this was the 21st or 22nd or something like that. I put out the misinformation that it was Sunday. Um, So let's get the information straight. (laughs) The sale is um, any one of my pocketbooks or David Vardaman's, you get free with any purchase. Okay, that we've got settled. Now, uh, the the actual sale is a day before, the day of, and the day after. If anybody, due to the misinformation, happens to get the wrong day, um, we'll honor the sale. So, I did say that I would also uh, uh, be, be putting up a, a YouTube review of all four of my novels, um, talking about a different aspect or doing something different, something I hadn't done before. Um, and so what I did with uh, um, Arjun and the Good Snake is I focused for the first time in my life in, uh, on speaking um, to others outside of my family about uh, my struggles with alcohol. Uh, To make a long story short, go there and look. Uh, To make it even shorter, uh, alcoholism kicked five years ago, almost. Four four and three quarters. Anyway, uh, and and those of you who see beer cans in the back in my photos, uh, I have guests, you know. And uh, (laughs) they bring me beer so they can drink more. that's one book. Second book, Driftless Trilogy. Well, the thing I did that was different is I snuck it into a book review on Robert Kalich. Richard Kalich, his brother. No, Richard Kalich. Uh, Larry Kalich, his brother um, of Betimes Books. Um, uh, I, I recommend my reviews not for the uh, um, facility I have as a reviewer, but um, because I think this is a guy who, who needs to be uh, spread around, read around, and uh, um, and we'll definitely give you the runaround, but he's damn cute about it. Today's book review is Skulls of Istria, and what I'm going to do different here is I'm going to read the review of a better reviewer. Um, Chris Villa wrote the afterword for this book, or I used a review of, of his for the afterword with his permission. Um, and no pay. Uh, when he tells you that I had never paid him, he's telling the truth. Um, we gave it the, the name afterward, and this is how it goes. What begins as a confessional novel with the casual beckoning of William F. Akers' A Confession, Albert Camus' The Fall, Lazno Krasnohorkai's The Last Wolf, transitions into a frenetic descent into the bitter truculence of William Gaddis' Agape Agape, and finally into the intense crescendo of historiographic onslaught found in Henry Miller's Black Spring and Louis Ferdinand Céline's Journey to the End of the Night. Yet Rick Harsh, an American expatriate living in Slovenia, stands out from the pack with an utterly original voice, a craftsman under the spell of Joyce, in command of every element of the prose, not an ellipsis is out of place. The rambling narrator, who cares not whether his subservient audience of one is coherent or not, sweeps the reader away like the famed Burya, a powerful wind that blows from the Hungarian basin to the Adriatic. From the first page, we know that our narrator will be digressive, forceful, and sardonic. Who better to give us a diatribe of Eastern Europeans and Slavic history? Matching the ever-rushing pace of his confession is the glut of wordplay, effortlessly compounding English and Slavic languages to achieve neologisms as poignant as 
as they are inventive. A small example would be squidnunks, which in the context of fishermen is a maritime play on the word quidnunk, an inquisitive, gossipy person. Effortlessly pepperly peppering the lingual rampage are an abundance of aphoristic quips and deft locutions. These are quotes. Hyperborean philosophers bleeding Wagnerian from the peaks. Never mistake religious or linguistic fidelity for the abominable integrity of blood. That's the best thing about being in a foreign land. The language, the language barrier, takes a great deal longer to despise the people you meet. What are academicians if not gangsters of the mind? American tourists always think that to step out of Western Europe is to step into a war. Fascism is not possible without nationalism, and you don't acquire virtue by the evil of your adversary. That's my favorite. Uh, the narrator is a defrocked historian whose credentials are stricken on the discovery of plagiarism. Nonetheless, his mind is brimming with historical knowledge, especially of the Eastern European and Slavic territories. Istria is an interesting locale, shared as it is between the three countries of Italy, Croatia, and Slovenia. From this store of knowledge, I was forced to dig into the stories of Josip Prostito and Gabriele D'Annunzio, among others. You get the sense that this narrator and his creator absorbs every book and every conversation on these matters. He mixes facts with the jousts of many presumably late-night conversations over maybe a little too much Vilyamoka. But the resulting synthesis for us is a veritable feast of signposts for further study, further broadening of mind. With skull imagery always comes the enigmatic scene of Hamlet with Yorick's skull held aloft. Earlier in Hamlet, the titular Dane refers to the encasement of his mind as a globe, no doubt a play on the venue in which the play was performed. The mind, then, is a symbol of confinement, confinement, Hamlet's nutshell. In Harsh's book, the image of the skull is conflated with that of a prison. Islands are perfect prisons, for the mind so readily adapts itself to the idea of isolation. The mind here is happily trapped in his skull, and can be counted as a king of infinite space. The paradox of slave and free man, signed Christia. Um, I couldn't have put it better myself, although I have to point out one thing that, that uh, was easily um, uh, uh, misleading. Uh, Istria is to anyone here not shared with Italy. Um, and Italians would say the same thing. We live in a bi-national uh, region, and um, as Isola, where I live, was once um, at least 90% Italian um, in population, and is now maybe under 10%, probably under 10% Italian, it's a long story and a difficult one, a fraught one. But um, the big question is, you know, if you look at uh, Istria, you see on the Croatian side, Rijeka. And people will tell you that Rijeka is not in Istria. On the other side, you have uh, Trieste. And people will tell you that Trieste is not in Istria. But if you actually look at a map of, uh, of Istria you'll find uh, that you really can't um, exclude Italy. Slovenia, um, if, you, if you do, then Slovenia on, on the Italian side ends on um, its last peninsula into the Adriatic. And, um, but half of that peninsula is Italian. And so um, I only want to comment on it I believe um, when I go to Rijeka, when I've been to Rijeka, I feel like I've entered in Istria. There's a, a characteristic of Istria. There's a feel of Istria. And um, it exists in Rijeka, which is one of the most uh, um, uh, um, uh, 
friendly and and warm cities uh, I've ever been to. Rebe Rebecca West talks about Rieka. Used to be Fiume. That's the town that D Gabriele D'Annunzio stormed in order to um, establish um, irredentist Italian uh, power over it. Um, but uh, um, Rieka is uh, an amazing town that Rebecca West just skips right over and there's nothing there. Um, well, there, there's a lot there. It's a, a beautiful place. And, you know, it's not conventionally uh, um, attractive to tourists as there are um, uh, no, no beaches in Rieka. Rieka is a steep town on the coast. And um, there's plenty there. There's great culture there. And nearby, of course, you have many islands and, and uh, you have beaches very, very nearby. And maybe even some in the city that I don't know about. But um, I just want to say, if you've re read Rebecca West, it's a great book. Black, black, lamb, gray falcon, black falcon, gray lamb, black lamb, gray falcon. Yeah, the mind dements. And uh, um, it used to ferment, and maybe that's why it dements. But uh, uh, it's a great book, but not all of it is um, uh, without uh, bias, I would say. Although uh, it is worth um, reading to me, uh, it's worth reading for... I don't remember how many pages on Denunzio. Maybe it was not even one page, but she nails Denunzio. And it, it's one of the, my favorite passages in all literature, um, travel, fiction, history, uh, whatever. Um, that, that, that writer's um, uh, absolute demolishing of, of the bald wonder, the grandiose... Gabriele D'Annunzio is fantastic. So, uh, that's The Skulls of Istria. And uh, the next book that needs to be reviewed is A Circumnavigation Through Maritime History. I'll probably have to do that tonight, um, given that the sale starts tomorrow. Or, or not. I don't know. Uh, you choose. Thanks.